Hi, and welcome to the farmstead. We appreciate you being here with us today. Today's vlog, I thought we'd do something a little different and just have a chat. I thought with almost 500 subscribers now, it might be a good chance to do a little get to know us video. So, I am out here soaking up some sun while Mr. Waring over there is uh, cutting some uh, wood or chopping some wood and uh, splitting it, I believe. Splitting wood. Splitting wood? Yeah, splitting wood. At least attempting to. <laughs> anyway, I was born and raised most of my life here in Ohio. Um, till I left Ohio at 15 and a half to move to Florida. Uh, my childhood consisted of um, hunting and foraging in the woods for mushrooms and deer, squirrel, fishing. We did raise, when I was very, very small, raise uh, meat rabbits. But other than that, most of the background I have and bring to our farm is just from being raised by a father who liked to hunt and fish and grandparents who liked to forage in the forest and plant gardens. And uh, we did have horses when I was younger. Um, when my mom remarried with my uh, stepdad, and so I grew up around those as well and mr waring grew up primarily in the city yes yeah right you, you did mm -hmm. did you have any experiencing hunting fishing or anything like that fishing with my grandpa fishing yeah no hunting. no hunting first exposure to riding horses and things like that was when we were together but always loved being in the country and outside I love working with his hands. But I was always outside. Yeah. Yeah. Usually working. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you moved to Florida from where were you born and raised? Massachusetts? You look that up. New Hampshire. <laughs> Google. It's a freaking creepy thing, but hey. Uh, and then moved to Florida when you were like 14 and three quarters. And I moved to Florida when I was 15 and three quarters. And uh, we met in high school. It was um, my senior year and your junior year, right? And I had the best pickup line ever. <laughs> I said, you're gonna be my wife someday. I just seen it as you walked through the door. We got a couple kids, some dogs, happy. <laughs> I hit pretty much all of it. You did, that you did. So we started dating in high school and uh, have been together ever since. Really? Yeah? Pretty much. Yeah. I mean, you know, we were kids, so we dated a few other people, but basically once we committed, we were committed. Had our children very young. That's going to be a good slow burn. Something's hard. Yeah, big old knots. Uh, our first child, uh, I was 19. My husband Wanted. was 18. Wanted him young to enjoy him. Yeah. Got married young. We've been married 30 years this past November. I don't believe I've made it this long. <laughs> Ain't dead yet. Yet. <laughs> yet. Okay, we're back. We got a phone call, business, so we had to pause. Where were we? We were talking about being married 30 years. He didn't know we went anywhere. <laughs> they can tell, I think, because the sun's kind of moved and I'm not being blinded anymore. And you're kind of not dressed the I'm same. I'm trying to keep dressed. As you were. I'd already be topless. <laughs> And you made a snide comment about I haven't killed you yet after being married 30 years. I'm the one holding the axe. That's <laughs> just the way it rolls. And he brought me a piece of chocolate and it still had foil on it. I think he was trying to kill me. No? It was not intentional, I swear. <laughs> so, anywho. We ended up with two beautiful children. 
Two boys, beautiful boys. Two beautiful granddaughters now. We've been very blessed in that department, starting young and, uh, you know. Enjoying every minute. Yeah, but we truly were that couple that our family looked at us because we were kids like, oh, this is never going to last. This is never going to make it, you know. And here we are 30 years later. But more than that, actually. Huh, babe? Ah, can't prove anything. <laughs> So we raised both of our boys in a small village just in town. I uh, had a little postage stamp, big old house, but a little postage stamp. Uh, and always gardened, always gardened. Oh, we had a, our house was on, uh, situated in a hillside. So we had a, my hubby here, did me a beautiful, <clears throat> what was it like 16 feet by eight feet, right babe? Something like that, square foot gardening. Read yeah. A book? yeah, I had read a book. I don't read shit. Prior to that, we raised vegetables in buckets. Um, but always I, have... I like experimenting better than reading. Yeah. Now, when we lived in Florida, even, you know, we grew vegetables in buckets, tomatoes and things like that. So we've always grown we've food. We've always had a salsa garden. Always a salsa garden. That's right. That's always. what we call it. Yeah, always a salsa garden or a kitchen garden. I've heard it referred to. No, nah, we ain't really had a kitchen in the garden. Oh, <laughs> I've always canned. My grandmother taught me how to can when I was young, and she always raised tomatoes and things. So I've always canned. My and mama I've always, bought always stuff canned. Out of cans. Always cans and jars because <laughs> that's that's, right. that's a city way. That's right. That's right. That's right. It's a city way by cans and jars. Good lord. <laughs> there you go. Your food in buckets. Not all city. Some city, stuff in buckets. Yeah. You ain't got no land. Yeah, it's true. 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 That was city garden. Yeah. I see what you're saying now. Absolutely. But we've always day, grown something. It's called you know, city as far as food, you know, our food. Never grown our own meat, just our food. One even raising our boys. Well, uh what got us into farming really was not only our love for being outside and you know, already loving gardening, but my health. I, uh, I've i always dealt with stomach and nerve issues since I was young, like 14. I always been on medication for it. Um, later in life. Go figure, she gets with me and I get on her nerves. <laughs> As I got older, I dealt with other issues in health and have had multiple surgeries, including a cervical fusion done. Um, which caused me to be on even more medication and more doctors and just not feeling good, being in constant pain all the time. And not accepting yeah. disability for a long time. Yeah, or my not limitations. Really, not really a disability, right? but a lack of ability to perform at your utmost peak. Yeah. Because you're still capable of doing a lot of stuff, Yeah. just in small bursts, very light, yeah. and as long as you listen to your body, wonderful. Yeah, but back then I was still trying to be Superwoman and Opioids. going to the doctors and saying, you know, I, I'm having a hard time working. I'm in so much pain. You know, I'm having a hard time functioning. I'm Big so Pharma just pain. says take another pill. And at no fault of their own, they are try, they were trying to help, but it just seemed like every time I went there or went back to my doctors and got my scans and all that, they just wanted to give you more pain medicine. Like. Mm -hmm. It just seemed like they just wanted to keep upping pain medicine. And I'm like, but it's not working. It's not Our working. Help me. Help me figure out what else I can do besides you keep giving me this stuff. Because it's not working. You know, not to mention, you know, I was have to take pain medicine just to go to work only to come home and be in 50 times more pain. Which then, of course, led to not a good quality of life for my family, let alone for myself. You know, I was kind of at my wit's end. And decided to change everything and dive headfirst into a better, healthy diet. I said diet, just as you hit that, hit like that wall. Like <laughs> you know, back I started, you know, getting back into herbalism and, you know, food is medicine. And what am I putting in my body that's making maybe it worse, right? And deciding that I do not want to live my life on opioids and antipsychotics if I can help it, right? 
not saying that it's not, you know, my, my, my path is not everyone's path. This is the wearing way farmstead. This is just my way. Might not necessarily be the right way for everybody, that's but it's right. the wearing way. That's right. That's right. Always. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything we do. So through that, I delved in, I started educating myself, Sean started, you know, educating and, and helping himself be educated to educate me so that, you know, we can kind of do this together because there is no way on God's green earth that I could do this without the support of that man right there. I mean, I just couldn't, you know, I, it goes both I ways. just couldn't. Happy spouse, happy house. Well, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you have to help your partner achieve happiness just like they help you achieve your happiness. It goes both ways. So I digress. So. You like that word. I do like that word. It's a very good explanatory word of my squirreling. You're a squirrel, all right. <laughs> so now, mind you, I am like, all right, I am just going down the rabbit hole of everything. And I did say I have a little bit of anxiety issues. So I tend to go really deep in that rabbit hole when I go down the rabbit hole of, you know, how, how is our food even processed? What am I putting into my face, right? If it's not something I grew myself, here I just have this tiny garden. Financially, it's hard sometimes to buy what they, they say is good for you, you know, now so... They say now they say the newest thing. They. The, the newest thing is the UK is banning ingredients that we use in our bread because the America says it's high. Right, <laughs> right. So you know, it you have to really do your research and and do what's right and comfortable for you. So I have taken the the issue of if I can raise it myself and cook it myself and I can pronounce what's in it, then I can eat it. You know, and that has come a long way. I take. Uh, zero pharmaceuticals for any anxiety or pain. Um, I CBD just do baby. all CBD and herbal medicine uh, and lifestyle and peace of mind. So, and for me, because of the way I grew up, I have found that this is where I'm most peaceful in nature with my hands in dirt or just even sitting out here. I can't do this. There's no way I could do this. Today, my shoulder and arm are really bothering me. I can't even use my little hand saw today, hence why the idea for this type of video as well. Yeah, but you're not technically disabled because you can read microfilm. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. Half our followers half, half probably don't even know what that is. That's true. If I do not know what microfilm is, that's for another video if we decide to share. <laughs> but that is true. So. If you were to ask, am I technically disabled? The technical US government answer would be no. If you ask my physicians if I am disabled, their written documentation of that answer would be absolutely 100% yes. Right. So there lies the conundrum. Back to farming. Again, I digress. Thank you for squirreling me, hubby. I didn't squirrel nothing. You squirreled me. I'm cutting wood. So we had a little kitchen garden. You know, things happen. We <laughs> sell our house and village. Our kids are grown. Thank you, we, we we rent <laughs> we <laughs> rented a small property right after we sold our house that we found because at that time you couldn't find rentals and it was big enough. So sure, we got it, and it really wasn't the greatest rental. So which led us into being able to rent our farm, which you saw in our videos if you've watched the channel for a while. And if we not, were go back and look and then click the ding the bell and subscribe and yeah, all like that. and share and <laughs> you know, like you care and all that good stuff, right? See us Wait, just like you just Oh Damn. Lord have yes. mercy. It happens once in a while. I can't watch him straight away because I think he's gonna chop his leg off every time. So I square up. So That's I don't right. Happen. So anyway, we rented our farm, which I mean what better way to figure out if you want to farm now mind you the first property I made sure hey can I at least have chickens which they said yes right which sure. that's a whole nother story about being sure you get everything in writing um, and so after talking my husband into okay well, we've been gardening can we please raise chickens so I can have some eggs and it's kind of like 
let's see if we can raise some livestock. Now that. <laughs> now, for those of you that don't understand what chickens mean, <laughs> you walk in the chicken aisle of your local TSC, any kind of supply company like that that gives you your local farm and stuff. And when you walk down in certain times of year, you hear chirp, 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 chirp. And there's probably about, you know, eight or ten buckets lined up on each side of the aisle. And then you take your lovely spouse with you and you go down the aisle and you only get six birds because that's all you need because six birds gives you three or four eggs per day on a regular yet chicken math means that eight months later you have to get six more birds <laughs> because the first six birds say screw you and they ain't laying no more okay well now you got 12 birds that you only were going to have six and i need a bigger coop that you originally because you're going to have six okay chicken math now you're gonna replace some birds, but you love these birds, you're attached to these birds, so you gotta get six more because now it's eight months later and you now have 18 birds. And now somehow, we have 32. somehow six months later, we have 32 birds. And I don't know, it's just, be eggs. careful with your chicken math because something's not adding up here. And I'm going back to cut the wood before I get in trouble. But we got eggs. We got eggs, baby. We got billionaires we on got. the eggs, cause... <laughs> Made me <Mine>. cry. <laughs> well, mind you, when I told my husband I wanted to raise chickens, I was going through Get a lot. Get six birds, that's it, well, six and, birds. And I was going through a lot, and you were doing a lot because I was physically and emotionally going through a lot with accepting my limitations. Just six birds. And so we had to take into consideration the fact we run businesses. He's a busy man. Can I physically do it? Can I? But, you know, once we were on board, babe, and I got you on board with my chicken math. No. That, you no. love being a chicken daddy. I like my chickens. <laughs> but you just wanted to go and get more birds. We have enough birds for now. I literally did just want to go buy more birds. Trying to incubate some and it didn't work. Poor Mr. Daphne ain't doing his job. I need another rooster. And in order to do that, I gotta get a full blood of Jersey because that's what we love. And I'm not gonna just get that from anybody. And anyway, it's a saga. So, so I gotta talk him into it first. <laughs> so we were able to get our baby chicks. We loved it. We loved it. It brought so much joy and just entertainment and peace of mind. It got me outside every day, a couple times a day. Out of it, my hair. <laughs> it got me doing yard work again. It just, it really was like the, the path to me truly feeling better and doing better and being better. So then that led us into meat birds, right? Because we got the blessing in disguise of the first rental not working out, giving us the farm, allowed us to have the land that the first one didn't have to do meat birds and make our first chicken tractor and see how that rolled and taste our homegrown chicken for the first time. And then looking at the research of how the commercial industry is with the meat that we consume and how they're raised and anyway more and more and more and more and more was we need to buy a farm so that we can live this way hence why we're here henceforth on our farm now mind you y'all know our mom my mama's here my mama also lives on on the farm she owns part of the farm she has invested in the farm we are a multi-generational farm and more and more that is happening here in America. It is something from days of old, you used to have multi-generational properties um, and it kind of went away. And now because circumstances we can't talk about or don't really want to mention, get booted. it's back again. And we are thankful for it because we have always been a tight knit family anyway. And you know, what better way for mama to feel like she can retire and live out her life the way she wants and we can live out our life. It just made sense. So if you watch the videos, you know, we have remodeled and she has her house and we have ours. They are connected like a duplex, but we each have our own living space or our own homes. So it's nice, it's nice. Ha. Now, even going further, looking ahead, Mr. Waring, my eyes are set on pigs. Yes? You? Did I get you off of chickens? <laughs> it kisses me off. 
<laughs> if it settles the chicken math. Look at that man chop wood. Anyway, I would like to get pigs small breed. We're looking Cooney Cooney, Idaho Pasture, uh, Julian maybe. Uh, just a smaller friendly. Because we have so much woods, that's where I want to run the pigs. Put them in the woods. Put them in the woods. Let them fatten up on beechwood tree nuts, which I didn't, I didn't even, I lived my life in the woods, practically didn't even know about them. Uh, acorns, we have all kinds of nut trees out here, as well as just good, loamy, nice dirt and soil throughout these woods. Uh, and they'll help clear so that we can get even more of the drainage issues figured out for, you know, down the road. When hopefully we get a pond put in over there. Huh, babe? Right. Yeah. A pond over there, huh, babe? Yeah, that's, yeah. So do you, what do you want to be when you grow up, Sean? I'm not going to run up. What do you want to be? I grew up a little bit. <laughs> I don't like it. I'm staying a kid. And I don't want to hear nothing about it. <laughs> what I do. He's going to be a farmer. I ain't going to think I ain't going nowhere. Well, I found farming has kind of saved us, at least me, and which has saved us because I needed saving. I, the, I was not doing well, and I'm glad that uh, I've been able to kind of turn that around through a lifestyle and love and um, saying it's okay to have limitations and that there's other ways of helping and providing and supporting and being a productive member of society then maybe I ain't being productive for society I'm being productive for my own self <laughs> the idea I don't like society people suck they do but you know not everyone but you know they people can be mean and expectations are hard when people place them on you and so accepting that you know the only people that matter at the end of the day is the people that you love and that are in your circle and the rest of it's just noise and it's all mostly acceptance and peace of mind and just being okay with being okay and farming I'm okay and, far and farming all Don't the voices in my head agree on that one <laughs> But anyway, that's it. Just a little get to know us while uh, Mr. Waring here shows off some of his chopping skills and I get to rest and enjoy some of his chopping skills. I don't have any skills. <laughs> I don't know, babe. I can tell you from the first time that you chopped wood in the wood, if you could chop wood in the wood, it's definitely different from this time chopping wood as far as your pain, accuracy, ability to... <laughs> Go through it. You're doing well, a good I don't job. I don't want no hocking on the film, man. I'm <laughs> on the camera over there. I'm done. Anyway, if you want to see more videos like this of us just chit chatting or maybe what's on our brain that day or to hear kind of crazy crap that goes on in our world just because sometimes just sitting around talking to us can be kind of fun. Have some brains. The zombies will be coming. <laughs> Give this video a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. What else should they do, babe? Uh, just probably just ding the bell. Get ding notified. The bell. And until next time, as always, have a great day. Get it. Get it, Mr. Wearing.